Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Ion Energy's channel. We're sitting here once again with Ali, and previously we dove deep into his past, got to know a little bit about him, but today we want to go deeper into the company itself. But first off, Ali, how are you doing? Doing very well, Michael. Uh, glad to be here again. Good. It's glad to have you back. So I'd like to start this out very simply. If we were an elevator, we have 50 floors to go up. Give me the elevator pitch for your company. Ion Energy is an early uh, lithium brine explorer in the country of Mongolia. We currently hold uh, two assets, the Babayol license, which is 81,000 hectares, uh, located in Sukhbatar province, 24 kilometers from the Chinese border in the Gobi Desert. Our second asset is the Urgachnarn license. That's about 29,000 hectares in Dorn Gobi province, also very highly prospective lithium brine. Uh, so in total, in aggregate, we control about 110,000 hectares of highly prospective lithium brine projects, uh, very early stage uh, of which exploration has commenced. Okay, so can you dive a little bit deeper on the projects? You, you talked about what they are and where they're sitting, and you say a very early stage. Can you explain to people what that means and what would come next for each one? Of course, for Bob Iol, um, it's an asset that uh, we sort of do dove into the data at the Ministry of Mines in 2017 and found that at Bob Iol, when uh, Mongolia was part of the uh, USSR, the Russian government did some drilling in that region in the 1950s. They were likely looking for potable water, ended up finding a brine solution. Uh, chalked it down to perhaps you can't drink this stuff. Obviously, nobody cared so much about lithium back then. And in the 1990s, the Russians and the Mongolians revisited that site, uh, extracted those brine samples, tested them for a plethora of minerals, including lithium. Uh, but it wasn't until 2016 that Dr. Hashbat Dashtat Seren of uh, the Mongolian University of Science and Technology, being a PhD lithium hydrogeologist, uh, spent a fair bit of time traversing the Sukhbatar province seeking lithium. He drilled two holes 70 kilometers apart and had an average grade of about 426 ppm, a max grade of 811 ppm. Uh, that prompted us to visit the Ministry of Mines in, in more detail and ask them to put a license up for tender. Uh, they put up the license for tender in 2018. We were one of four groups that went after the license. We were awarded it in January of 2019 due to our team, our expertise, and our ability to finance. And that's when Ion Energy truly as a company was born. Um, so that early stage license with a bit of work done on it got us excited enough to, to, to move things forward with Bob Iol. And we used that license as the uh, foundation of the company for us to go public in August of 2020. Um, as a company, strategically, uh, we went public on the Toronto Stock Exchange, the Venture Exchange, uh, under ticker ION. Uh, we also listed in the U.S. as early as 2021 under ticker ION GF or DCQB markets. But we also spent uh, a bit of time once we went public to, to start exploration. Uh, and so Bob Iol, uh, we started a geophysics and microseismic program uh, shortly after going public in October. Uh, we managed to use that data to define and design where our drill rigs would go into the ground. Uh, but we were dealt with a, a bit of a delay in country in November. Uh, November was when Mongolia first entered its, uh, its lockdown from the pandemic that has now been seen around the world. And so we used that time to, to really evaluate um, uh, the best efforts in terms of exploration when we're allowed to get out. Uh, but we also used that time to acquire Urgak Naran, which is the secondary license that we spoke of. So as far as exploration on Bob Iol to date, uh, we commenced a drilling program in May of uh, 2021. We drilled uh, 21 holes uh, in excess of 810 meters uh, in terms of depth, uh, collective depth. We pulled up core samples using a diamond RC rig. We pulled up brine samples that will be assayed as well. But as a company, importantly, and, and for any lithium explorer out there, uh, the, the uh, item of validation really was the fact that we, we struck brine. So we did hit bodies of brine, proving, therefore, that there is, in fact, brine in the ground there. And now it's a matter of assaying and hydrogeological testing to determine the average grade and ultimate uh, early resource indication for Bob Iol. We've also designed an exploration program for Urgak Naran that includes hydrogeological testing. We will be partnering with a local firm to assist us through that exercise. And we expect that drilling to start uh, in and around the August timeframe. Wonderful. You, you kind of dive into some of the intricacies of lithium mining. Can you explain to people who say maybe more familiar with, with gold mining and some of the terminology there, what the parallels versus differences are when you're looking for lithium, like brine being one of them? Absolutely. You know, gold can be found in, in multiple different forms. Uh, you have alluvial gold, you have uh, you know, sinter caps that, that ultimately end up requiring a heap leach operation or a CIF flotation circuit uh, to, to extract from the sulfides. 
Uh, gold is very much a hard rock uh, mining uh, type methodology, whereas lithium brine is very similar to oil and gas uh, in, in the sense that you need to reach that pocket of oil or brine in our case, and ultimately extract it to surface to, to further purify it for consumption in batteries, et cetera. So uh, wh while they are similar in terms of, you know, it is mining, it is a mineral resource, um, it, we have more parallels to draw from oil and gas mining than we do from hard rock mining uh, for brine. Interesting, interesting. So then can you go a little bit deeper into the share structure of your guys' company right now? Just kind of explain where you guys are sitting in terms of amount of shares outstanding and so on. Of course. We have about 60 million shares uh, in the company that are that are on the, the exchange today. Uh, those 60 million shares are, are held uh, by 25% of which are held by management and insiders. Uh, we participated in every round from the seed financing to family and friends and down to the, the very latest bought deal that we completed in, in April of this year. So 25% is a significant chunk of the company. We are fully escrowed for two years. So as management and insiders, we cannot sell, assign, or transfer a single share. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a uh, family offices that are in Europe uh, that hold about 9% of the company. Uh, you have Delbrook Capital, which is a uh, fund out of Vancouver that uh, participated in, in the last financing with the lead order. They hold about 9% as well. Uh, in terms of funds that own uh, our, our, uh, our stock, we have... Uh, um, Maxit Capital owns about 3%. That's led by Bob Sanga. Uh, we have Alpha North Asset Management. So Steve Palmer, he owns about 3% of the company as well. Greg Schofield of Spartan Funds also owns 3%. And let's not forget the Mongolian investors. We have local Mongolian investors that have a stake in the company and they currently hold close to 10% of the company as well. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, it's always great when you see management and such really sticking behind the project. You guys are deep in it too. You guys believe in this project and that's great. So last but not least, tell me what people should be excited about for your guys' future. Tell us what they should be looking forward to over the next year or so. Absolutely. The intention of the, pro of the company is, is to execute upon our exploration programs to better understand and de-risk our assets, uh, get a better sense of the grade of the lithium that resides uh, beneath surface, uh, understand the levels of impurity and thus ultimately the extraction methodologies that would be required to, to bring that lithium to battery grade. But importantly, as a company, I think, you know, as we start to explore and de-risk and come to an early resource indication in and around Q4 of 2021, uh, you can expect the company to bring in a strategic investor one that has mined for lithium or brought lithium mines to production around the world uh, for a toehold in the organization for say 10% of the company at a significantly higher valuation, one would hope, given the work that we're doing today, uh, but ultimately allow them to have a board seat uh, in the company, allow us to better understand uh, using their relationships and their, their intellectual capital, uh, how an asset of this nature would be brought to development and thus production. Uh, we would also provide that uh, strategic with a rofer, so a right of first, re first refusal as far as the acquisition and development of these assets. So a lot of work to, to be done by the company, but more excitingly, um, a lot more strategic conversations to take place in the, in the coming year as well. Wonderful, Ali. I think you did an amazing job laying out the company, explaining to people what it is you guys are doing, what to look forward to and everything. So thank you so much for coming on. If anyone has any questions about anything you just watched or anything else about the company, don't be afraid to reach out. Leave them below. We'll happily dive into those and stay tuned because we'll get you some more information and news over the wire as soon as it comes in. For now, Ali, have a wonderful day. Thank you, Michael.